A young woman walks into a West Oakland warehouse. Despite being uncommonly accomplished in other aspects of her life, this is a new experience for her. She is timid and shy and not entirely sure what she could possibly have to offer this team of skilled industrial artists who call this workshop home. But before she leaves that day, she's learned how to rivet. One month later, she too is calling the cold, cavernous warehouse her home. Two months further on, and now she is standing in the Black Rock Desert, looking up at a two and a half ton sculpture, a giant musical instrument that breathes fire and sings in patterns of colored light, which she helped create. Standing alongside her fellow makers, she is filled with the inelocutable joy of creation and self-discovery. She has moved beyond the limits she'd previously believed herself to have, along the way discovering new family and friends and a deeper understanding of her own agency. She feels larger than she was before and more connected, but also more fully herself. Her experience was personal and specific. It was not available in stores. The sculpture that towers above her, as impressive as it is, is almost irrelevant now. It is merely the artifact of her transformation, a dull chrysalis to her newfound butterfly iridescence. Her heart beams and her mind crackles with the electric spark of new possibilities. No longer merely a consumer, she has become an engaged creator of her own experience, unplugged from the shopping mall matrix. This is the power of collaborative culture. Collaborative endeavors are the cornerstone of all human accomplishment. Indeed, with a broad enough perspective, all acts of creation are collaborative. Working in a pure vacuum is an impossibility. We are inescapably influenced by all that has preceded us. We stand upon the shoulders of giants and midgets alike, and yet still claim each new discovery as our own. Despite being very rarely true, the illusion of individual genius persists. Even here in Black Rock City, we regularly see projects which were the product of many minds and hands being lumpenly credited to one or two individual artists. But we're beginning to reject such overly simplistic notions of ownership. Projects like Wikipedia, Kickstarter, and the open source software movement have disproven the tragedy of the commons. The people participating in these movements are happy to share the credit often with dozens or even thousands of others, and they believe strongly in the benefits of large-scale collaboration. When we work together, we become stronger, smarter, and more capable than when we work alone. When we reach consensus with people of differing backgrounds and perspectives, we become more empathetic. Writing about Wikipedia, author Joseph Regal calls this process good faith collaboration. James Surowiecki describes it as the wisdom of the crowds, However you choose to label it, it is clear that a new model of collaboration is not only practicable, but that for many tasks, it works far better than the alternatives. So why do people f participate in these endeavors? And why do so many of them find the experience so fulfilling and so addictive? If you ask the 50,000 citizens of Black Rock City why they burn, you'll get 50,000 different answers. And indeed, this rich individuation is perhaps the most significant aspect of our emerging participatory culture and what most sets it apart from what has preceded it. The unexpected byproduct of industrialization and mass media, those incredible engines of efficiency and communication that powered the 20th century past the knee of Kurzweil's curve, has been the emergence of a dominant and stifling mass culture. Once upon a time, everything was bespoke. Today, everything is a commodity. Even the so-called long tail is deceptive, offering a thousand differently co-branded variations on a single mass market product, the fundamental need for which goes unquestioned amidst the ever-increasing noise and distraction. We shop in the supermarket of the spectacle, purchasing our cultural identities from a rack of ready-to-wear ready stereotypes. That the size of that market continues to increase doesn't make its offerings any less impersonal or ill-fitting. Where mass culture is mediated and superficial, collaborative culture is immediate and deep. It represents a return to the warty real, a rugged landscape fraught with unexpected challenges, inevitable disappointments, and plenty of room for individual exploration and discovery. 
It is a new frontier whose pioneers have chosen to sail beyond the safe harbor of consumer culture, trading its cheap plastic trinkets, mere signifiers of meaning, for genuine experience and real dangers. Here, there be tigers. For many, this experience is unlike anything they have encountered before, empowering, personal, and highly transformative. Unlike buying, creation is at its core an alchemical process. Its power is impossible to describe. It must be experienced. Once that happens to someone, mass culture will rarely ever hold the same appeal for them. If this experience happens here in Black Rock City, there's a natural tendency to attribute it to some property of this place. I assure you, as magical as Burning Man may be, the transformation you experience here has less to do with the playa itself than with the stories we tell each other. To illustrate the power of stories, I like to use the classic parable of stone soup. As commonly told, two travelers arrive in a village with no money, no food, and no possessions save for an empty pot. And yet, through their clever telling of a story, the story of stone soup, they gradually convince each of the villagers to contribute to a rich and hearty stew in which they all can share. I've heard this tale used a number of ways to illustrate the gullibility of common folk, the exploitability of socialism, or even the benefits of traveling with your own cookware. But I think it best expresses what people can accomplish together when motivated by a good story. The villagers had always possessed the means to create such a feast, but would never have conceived of doing so had it not been for the travelers and their intriguing story. In collaborative culture, leaders must learn to become storytellers. Stripped of blunt incentives of capitalism, it is the potency of the story you tell, its ability to inspire, include, and infect those who hear it that determines the success or failure of a collaborative pro project. Aspiring leaders must learn to focus not on their project goals, but on providing fulfilling and self-actualizing experiences to as many individual participants as possible. They should endeavor to discover why each person has chosen to participate and, help and adjust their story to facilitate that outcome. Take care of your volunteers as individuals with individual desires, fears, modes of communication, and your project will take care of itself. In Fight Club, Tyler Durden gave fierce, shirtless voice to the disenfranchisement inherent in late capitalism, arguing that none of us will ever become celebrities or rock stars, not really. But in fact, we can, provided that we simply redefine our notion of celebrity. By telling more inclusive stories, we can each become heroes for one another, and everyone gets to be a rock star. Where others feel powerless to affect any change in the world, collaborators see endless possibilities. The inflection points where simply telling a new story can have great consequences. They are hackers and humanists, makers and burners, scientists, poets, and lovers. And through their actions, they are propagating a new culture of empathy and informed optimism throughout the world. Tell your stories to the world and tell them well, and invite others to help you make them real. Lead a stone soup revolution.